Hello and welcome, I'm Vincent McCorry and this is Africa 54 tonight. Anxious citizens in the West African nation of Mali will have to wait a bit longer before learning who will become their next president. Several candidates have already denounced partial results released earlier this week as fraudulent. For the latest uh, Mali election news, VOA West Africa correspondent Anne Look joins us via Skype from Bamako. Anne, welcome to Africa 54. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Now, we were expecting the provisional results to be released today. What has held them back? You know, it appears that they're still working on them. They're still verifying the vote counts. You know, it was a last-minute um, delay, so we're now being told Friday. Yeah, well, there were some concerns raised by the other candidates. Uh, Mr. Bubakar Keita uh, implied, or they, it was implied he might actually win in the first round, but uh, Sisi supporters, the Modibo supporters, and, and the other guys are saying, no, it's not possible. What are the issues here? Yeah, um, it was more than implied. I mean, the minister outright said it. Um, and the other candidates were not at all pleased. Um, they're saying the party of Sumaila Sise, who the minister said would come in second, um, says that by their counts, um, keep in mind the candidates do their own, their own vote counts, um, that it's simply not possible that the country doesn't go to a runoff. That, yeah. that, that, that Ibeka, that Ibrahim Bubakar Keita would have still needs to win something like 700,000 of the ballots cast in order to not go to a runoff, something they said is just not possible. Yes. It, one of the other things actually they've mentioned is that there were so many uh, people excluded from, from the vote. It was kind of expected because of the chaos, especially in the north. Was this raised before the election and was this seen as a, perhaps something that might lead to this kind of uh, stalemate? Yeah, there were a lot of concerns about the organizational issues, especially with the voter list ahead of the vote. You know, international observers um, said that all of those issues were minor and that at the end they wouldn't affect the credibility of the results. The candidates right now, you know, CSA's party is concerned about what they're calling ballot stuffing, as in that, you know, they're concerned about it's about a million voter cards that were blank and that had been ordered by the country that had then not been used for this election. And they have expressed concern about what happened with those voter cards, for example. The other thing I've noticed is that uh, France is coming into the fray again. Uh, the CISA supporters and others are looking at it as uh, manipulation by the French to have uh, pushed this election forward. Uh, is France going to be again seen here by one side as an enemy and the other side as a real friend? No, I don't think we're going to see another another Ivory Coast here. But, um, you know, quite a few Malians, even those su that support Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, were a little displeased with all the pressure on the country to hold this election. And, you know, in the end, observers say things went fairly well, but it was a bit iffy there for a while. Uh, in a word, uh, uh, what does uh, uh, what the picture look like um, from the ground? Will it end well, regardless? You know, what I saw in the first round was very convivial campaigning, you know, not, not a lot of tension, very, you know, I support my candidate, you support yours, that's fine. There is concern that if it does go to a runoff, that it's going to get a lot more tense, that we're going to see, you know, two camps kind of consolidate, and that, for example, Ibrahim Bubakar Keita, someone who had a lot of support in the first round, might have difficulty going up against a coalition of candidates in the second round. So, you know, there are concerns it could get more tense, but, you know, up till now, it seems to be fairly calm. Well, thanks a lot for the updates, and we'll be checking in with you in the coming days. And look, our Voice of America correspondent reporting to, uh, for us live from Bamako.